settle down and uh, get ready to do the service today. But welcome. Good morning. First of all, good morning and welcome to Holy Spirit Church. Uh, today we have a hodgepodge crew. Uh, Mark and I, uh, Pastor Bill Matlock, is in Seattle visiting the family. And uh, we have a very special guest speaker today. That's Pastor Free. And uh, just a little background about Pastor. He was the founder of this church and was the main person responsible for bringing back into the church of Christ. And I've always been growing up in a church oriented family. As most of us go through life, have difficult times sometimes. And Sort of drifted away in my younger years and as free was very instrumental in getting that uh, hook that you see that he as a fisherman cast cats out and dangles it in front of me about the good life of Christ and he grabbed me by the lip and brought me in and then the people within this church were so loving I think the Butlers uh, being my sponsors at that time my family my wife and I and my family and uh, it's very special to have him here today to speak with us and impart some of his wisdom. So thank you, Pastor. Uh, we're going to start today with our first song. The hymn is going to be hymn number 373 in your red worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, prayer of the day. Uh, let us pray. Eternal and all merciful God, and with all the angels and all the saints, we laud our majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the blessing of the reader as Lisa comes up. May be seated. May be seated. Christ is risen. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than a two edged sword. Lisa, as you read to us the scriptures, may they pierce our souls and judge the thoughts and the intentions of our hearts. The first reading is from Acts 9. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. <clears throat> now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? He replied, He, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Word of God, word of life. Amen. The second reading is from Revelation 5. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, and glory, and might, forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. And at this time, you may be seated. We have a message from Pastor Freed. He's going to have to forgive me for uh, uh, talking about him a little bit further because uh, he has been so instrumental in the mission of this church over the years. Uh, started it in, I think it was 68 or something like that. And um, has influenced a lot of lives here. It's a pleasure to have him with us to share his words of wisdom. And I know we did this several years ago, and it was something to behold because I think in life you always learn. You never cease learning in life, and he was able to give us more messages and more chances to learn about the world around us and what Christ means to each one of us. Just open our eyes and listen to his voice. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Oh, wow. I got used to that. I'm used to shouting. <laughs> and I'm not used to sitting. I like to stand. But greetings to all of you who have come in the name of Christ our Lord. And forgive me for not dressing up. I usually have my collar on when I'm preaching and that, but. I guess when you are retired, you can dress as you want to dress. I dress as I want to dress. My mother would say, you look sloppy. But, but she's not here today, so. I remember when I, I was in church one time in my home church, and a minister came, and he walked up to the pulpit and spoke to us that day. He was a guest, and he was 100 years old. So that was really impressive to me, and I always remember it. But today is May Day. Any of you uh, make, make, make baskets on your children and uh, deliver them to neighbors? Anybody, anybody here make, make, make baskets? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. May Day, the beginning of uh, a new season of the year. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to have a conversation instead of a sermon. And that's why I'm sitting down. Uh, it's, I think the church of the future is going to be more of a uh, sitting down and a conversation among Christian people rather than somebody sitting up there and speaking at you. So as I'm speaking today, uh, if there are any questions that you that seem to come to mind, you can interrupt me with your hand in the air. But talking about May Day, 
May Day is also a, uh, a call for help. And uh, if a ship is in trouble, May Day, May Day, come and help us. The origin of that uh, particular uh, May Day call for help came from England, where there was a radio operator who was just kind of fooling around and wondering what uh, what would be a good distress call. And it came to him that in the French language, the word mayday sounds, uh, means help me. And it sounds like mayday, mayday. And so through conversation with other people, other radio operators, they came up with the idea of using Mayday as a call for help. Help me, Mayday. And I'm thinking about the disciples as they were with Jesus in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was sleeping on the boat, and all of a sudden a big storm came up, and the disciples were afraid that they were going to uh, <clears throat> drown in the storm. And so one of them went over there and woke up Jesus. They knew that he was a miracle worker. And they woke him up, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And may they, may they help us calm the storm. And Jesus uh, did awaken and he did uh, calm not only the storm, but he calmed the disciples as they were shouting and uh, calling for help from him. And I think that that's the way it is with us when we come to church. Some of us come in here and we have some real problems in our lives. We might not even share them with other people, but we have them within us. And the church is a place where you can come and you can have a uh, conversation with God and you can, can say, maybe don't shout it out, but you can say, mayday, mayday and God is there to help you. Well, let's see what else I'm going to talk to you about today. One person came up to me and said, I want to give you a piece of advice today. Keep it short. But uh, how do you make something short when it's 50, 50 years old? 1969 was the year when this was a, just a vacant lot it wasn't even a vacant lot, it was a, a wetlands. In fact, if it were today, uh, no building would be on this place. It would be set aside as a wetland. But nevertheless, it was West Bloomfield, and I was called to come here and either start a church for the ELCA or to say it isn't a place where we should have a church. So that was my, my call. Either you start a church or you close it down. West Bloomfield at that time was 14,000 people. Now it's 70,000 people. There was, uh, Archer Lake Road was two lanes. There was one stoplight in West Bloomfield, if you can believe that. And that was the corner of Maple and Orchard Lake Road, one stoplight. And the high school was just breaking ground, being built across the street, as was the fire station down the, down the road. And uh, I began to knock on doors to find out if there were people who were interested in the church. So my first role was to go around in the neighborhood and uh, this uh, subdivision around us was just vacant land. There were a few uh, houses being built. I remember the cost of the uh, house over here was listed at $55,000. I thought that was, that was really out of this world. But nevertheless, I began to knock on doors, probably a hundred a day, until I had knocked on almost all the doors in the neighborhood. I figured that if I called on 10 people, I would get one prospect. So I did uh, make those those calls, and only one one 
person that slammed the door in my face, but I thought that was pretty good. There were no, if you can believe this, there were no synagogues in West Bloomfield at that time. In fact, uh, at the time we were being built, the first synagogue was being built here, and there was no Roman Catholic church in West Bloomfield. People didn't even know what a Chaldean was. And uh, what else was there? Oh, uh, the people who came here were mainly white people, uh, transfers from business places, and they would come for a while and then they'd move and somebody else would take their place. A lot of kids were running around here. So uh, as we started our work, we found out that there was a, a great opportunity for a congregation. And so this was kind of an experiment and the church at large said to me, if you think there's a, uh, enough of a prospect for a church, we'll build a church for you, even though you don't have a congregation. And so I was a one person building committee and we built a fellowship hall out here. And uh, before, we, before it was built, we had our uh, worship services at Green School in the gymnasium. And some people wonder why the altar is shaped in this way. It's sort of the basketball circle. And uh, we would commune around the basketball circle with a group above us. And the uh, altar was a cafeteria table with, with a tablecloth put on it. So that's what that was at Green School. And then when we were, after one year, we were ready to establish a church here. And we had our first service, and I think there were about 120 people came to that service at Green School. And uh, a member of the neighboring minister came and sang Bridge Over Troubled Waters. It, that was kind of interesting. I always remember that song, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Forgive me for looking at my notes, but I don't want to go on too long to make it, you know, to disturb that man who drove me to the store. <laughs> Are there any? Okay, I, I don't want to forget any hands that are raised. And, oh yeah, then, now let's move to this building. We had worship services in the fellowship hall for a long period of time, and those were really great worship services. It was kind of echoing or that, but we had good worship services. But the time came when that was too small, and so we decided to build a second edition, this edition. And we were excited about it, and uh, the bids came in, and they were $65,000 beyond what we were able to pay to start this church. And the people were kind of down in the mouth about that. And I said, without talking to my wife, I said, you know what we're going to do? My wife and I are going to go to our savings account and pull out a thousand dollars and pledge it toward erasing this sixty-five thousand dollar shortage that we have. She she didn't disagree with me because she was in favor of it too. So, and then more people began to do that, and by we asked other people to help us, and by the time. A week had passed, we had raised $60,000 gold cash, and we were on the way to starting this building. One of our members at the time was an architect uh, for the Yamasaki's architectural firm. Yamasaki was a very famous architect. Yeah. He was the one who designed the World Trade Center. And so the member of our church, uh, was one of his responsibilities was to uh, be in charge of the design for the interior of the World Trade Center. And he was the one who designed a lot of this that we have here. So a, an architect,
architect who worked on the World Trade Center in interiors also worked on this building. And what we have here is the, the result of his, his work. I think that's very significant. And, the, and this window that we have, the stained glass windows, before they were just plain window glass and the sun would shine in and it would be very irritating. And so we went around searching for an architect and one of our building committee uh, members knew of uh, the Bloomfield Birmingham Art Center and went over there and talked to a, just a budding, uh, budding window designer and he took the contract for us and all of this stained glass is antique glass from Italy that was brought here. He designed that. And uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the dove is hidden behind the wall there. You see the head of the dove down there at the bottom, and the wings soaring up and so on. He came up with this idea of how to do these windows here while he was flying over the Pacific Ocean to attend a meeting of art class designers. So he was really a great guy. And then he said, you should also use that fruits of the spirit there as uh, we're going to we thought of using the disciples or something, something like that. But in Galatians, it speaks a lot of fruit of the spirit. And I can't see but somebody shout out, what's the first one in? Is it love? Yeah. What's the next one? Yeah. And then? Kindness, joy, peace, graciousness, generosity, patience, self-control. Okay, so that's what the Holy Spirit is about. When we started the church, it was called not, not by my choice, but when I came here, the mission was called Redemption Lutheran Church. I always thought that sounded like green stamps. So I thought we need to have a better name than that. And so to me, God appears to us as the Holy Spirit. Yes, God appears as Jesus. God appears to us as, as the uh, Father. But I think that God comes to us in this place as, a, as his spirit, and the spirit of God is within us. And so the name was chosen as Holy Spirit Church. No Lutheran in it at that time, just Holy Spirit Church, because Lutheran is put in below, below it as in small letters. We were first of all the spirit Christ, and then we were in the Lutheran tradition. So that was uh, also um, something that happened. Oh, now for, for my friend, I want to tell him we're going to page three. <laughs> and there's only three pages. But anyhow, it, it is kind of fun to write these things down. Oh yeah, the next thing I want to talk about, I was walking to the parking lot one day between, well, I don't know, after, it was after this building was built and, and the attendance was down and, and that uh, member of the church came up to me and he said, what's going to happen to our church? What do you think is going to happen to our, to our church? And I think uh, there's a story told that, to me, kind of uh, illustrates that. There was a wise man in the community, and he had all the answers for everything. And there was a little boy who said, I'm going to fool this wise man. He has uh, all the answers there. I'm going to ask him a question that he can't, that he can't answer. So the little boy went out, and he got a a small bird and he put it in his hands so that the wise man couldn't see it. Then he walked up to the wise man and he said, uh, I've got
got something in my hand. Is it alive or is it dead? The wise man saw some feathers sticking out. And the boy thought in his mind, if this wise man says it's alive, I'm going to crush him and it will be dead. And I'll show him, no, you didn't know. But if he says it's, uh, it's dead, I'll let my, uh, my hands and the bird will fly away. And you were wrong. The bird is alive. So the men were out there and said, what's going to happen to our church? The answer is, it's up to you. And it's up to God. We are partners in ministry in Holy Spirit Church. The church has been full. The church has been next to empty. But it's always here as the church. And people ask, what's going to happen to the church after the pandemic? And the church is not just our church. We are in partnership with God. There's a song, some of you might know, My God and I. And when you come to this church, you and God meet in this place. You might come with the storms of life bothering you. I know that each of you, in some time, in some way, or in some fashion, have had some pretty stormy things happen in your life. And God is there with you, and He cares. I just read on the internet this morning one of the politicians said, The church has been taken over by Satan because it feeds refugees at the border, and it's against the law to feed refugees. So the Satan has taken over the church, and the church allows people of different sexual orientation to be in the church. Satan has taken over the church. Well, don't you believe it? God is more powerful than Satan, and God is the God that you meet in this place, and it was established so that you would have some place to come. In our, in our community today, there are 61 different languages spoken in the homes of the children who go to West Winfield schools. And Holy Spirit Church is for them. It's not just for Lutherans. It's for anybody who wants to have a meeting with God, who wants to have a Mayday experience where God will answer their call for help. Well, I guess I'm coming to the end of my remarks. Are there any questions that we may have? I'm not looking for any, but if you like to rise up. Thank you. It's good to see you. Oh, there's one there. When's the next time you're going to speak? You have to talk loud so I I really enjoy your, oh, your stories. I'm well done now. You were all done. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Pastor, and thank you for taking my advice. Oh, <laughs> if you'd like to join us now, stand and sing hymn number 755, Jesus Savior, Pilot Me.
Activity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ God. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural foreign forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor, labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Amen. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially those we name before you now. Amen. Turn their mourning into dancing. Clothe them with joy. Put a testimony of healing and a praise on their lips. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy. Amen. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us and renew us by your living, your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Amen. You may share the peace as you feel you should. <laughs>
Let us pray as our ushers come forward to receive the offering. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all to, at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your, your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Bell Choir. Please stand if you're able and join us in the offertory. and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true pastoral lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord. We remember the words our Lord said at the Last Supper. On the night in which he was betrayed by our Lord, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said to his disciples, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to, to drink, saying, This is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and, the people, and all the people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me now in the prayer our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Come to the table. Or, eat, or take the communion at your seat with the provisions you were given uh, and know that you are loved. You may be seated and take communion. If you did not receive communion, the ushers will bring you one. Thank you. 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. I do not have the announcements up here, I don't think. Oh, I've got a bulletin, so check your bulletin for announcements. Are there any announcements that aren't in the bulletin that someone wants to bring to our attention? Yes, Ruth. Please take the coffee hour. All right. <laughs> now that was brief. <laughs> Pastor Free took note of that. He said, I, maybe I'll just get up here and say, stay for coffee hour next time. So, anyway, our closing hymn today is number 379 is the, is the part when he said benediction. Okay, and then please stand for the benediction and then the closing hymn. <laughs> 